Click Donate Now. Or if you prefer, you can send a check to WHPC Radio, One Education Drive, Garden City, New York, 11530. Make check payable to the NCC Foundation. In the memo of your check, write WHPC Donate Now. Any contributions will help defray our operating costs, and it's tax deductible. This message was brought to you by the radio voice of Nassau Community College. Streaming online at ncc.edu slash whpc. We're listening to the Motor Mouth. One, two, three. Motor Mouth Radio Rules. Do you guys know that you're the highest rated automotive show in Westby, Montana? Give them a listen. Don't change the dial at 12 o'clock. I know you want to. Motor Mouth. Well, let's talk about cars. I love your show, and I haven't worn your t-shirt that you sent me yet. I think you have nothing to talk about, and you should maybe go to therapy. Motor Mouth. Thank you so much, Chris and Wright. Hey, is this the uh, car show on the radio? Can Motor Mouth Radio help me get velocitized? Our trained staff of two will help. Ooh, ooh, I'll be listening. Your audio is almost to the point of being distorted. Quite frankly, there are better things to do with your time. I guess it's just the three of us today, huh? I said this time I'm going to have to listen to what you guys have to say. He's trying to call for like ten minutes. You people not picking up the phone. Yeah, I want to know what the <laughs> is wrong with my car. You guys, once you creep into one psyche, that's the end of it. Professor Ray is so critical of my chrome exhaust, I don't know what to do. Honored yeah. to be here with you two guys. I feel a whole lot better talking to you guys, too, that the can feel confident it's not going to do that to me on the highway. Oh, I hate hearing that. Don't put the whammy on. Don't put the whammy on. I got to tell you, I love your show. I listen to you guys bantering back and forth. You got me laughing. I learn stuff. It's just great. It really is. So it takes a failure in your car for you to call and talk to us? I get nervous talking because I know I'm on the radio and like, oh, man. No one's listening. Don't worry. No one's listening. There are answers, sometimes correct ones, and we may have them. Motor Mouth Radio, 90.3 FM, WHPC. Vote him out! This is Motormouth Radio, your one-hour automotive talk show. And now, here are your Motormouths, Chris Switzer and Ray Guarino. All righty, good automotive talk shows are so overrated. That's why you listen to us. We're Motormouth Radio, your one-hour automotive talk show, right here on Long Island. I'm Chris Switzer, and of course... You've heard this before, right? I know. When President Obama announced he was visiting Cuba, this man was the first to put in his order of cigars. And he'll tell you all about it right from behind the shop bench. It's Ray Guarino. How are you, my brother? I haven't heard that, but it's a good idea. I have to do that. I'll just take the sandwich. You ever have that Cuban sandwich? Those are really good, too. And the man looking for the Cuban sandwich, El Cubano, our third co-host, is our... Now listen to this closely, Chris, because there'll right, be a right. quiz. Okay, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm going to write this all down. Ex- he is our extremely adept diagnostic gearhead. Break that down. It's E A D G. Joe knows what that means. E-A-D-G. Yes. E A D G. What does That's it mean? Right. The left hand knows the. Bi- it's the four strings on a bass. Uh, That's if you're running a four string, not a six string or an eight string bass like that. Right, now. I can't count that high. So I know, I know. I'm a talk about the the quarter octaves and all. It's like I don't know how you. <laughs> Jeez, I'm especially waiting. with little fingers. <laughs> I'm waiting for that time when you run out of bass metaphors or bass uh, acronyms or whatever have you. Yeah, me right too. Before we run out of disco ones. <laughs> yeah, 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 me too. <laughs> right before the disco ones. Joe D here with us on a Sunday and every Sunday. How are you, my brother? <sighs> it's Sunday, thank God. Yes, that means it is. That I already had Saturday. I think I remember. It, but <laughs> <laughs> or it had you. No, no, yeah. Uh-huh. For lunch. Yeah. <laughs> That's another story. Was it a honeydew Saturday or no? Was it? A- oh no, 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 no. It was. It was in the can. It was definitely <laughs> in the can. <laughs> That's good. That's good. A can, can network diagnostics. Got it. I thought you were just sitting in the can. I figured that's where that's where I usually do all my reading. No, I, I usually get kicked in the can. It'll be control area network, if I'm correct. Yes, that's right. One of Mr. Bosch's creations there right. back in the day. So, good idea. Yeah. And that's what the... it works. Yeah, that's what the Hot Rod guys are using now. I forget what the name of the system is called. ISIS? No. The, uh, no, it's like that, though. Yeah. It's yeah, very much yeah, like that. Uh, yeah, it's some it, yeah. Uh, Egyptian god. It's very that. much like that. And it's it's just a can network. 
for a right. for hot rod. Which is basically two wires, a couple of 60-ohm resistors, and off you go. 120-ohm resistors. Instead of running big honking power wires, you run little signal wires all exactly. the Exactly. Mm, yeah. And got so it. much fun when they stop talking to each other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you better talk or I'm going to cut you. No, no, no. <laughs> well, you could watch the uh, frivolity on vaughnlive.tv <laughs> slash motormouth where you can watch his watch Joe. Joe be a moil. Joe <laughs> uses his fingers to do the cutting yes. here on Motormouth Radio. You can watch us and you can also check us out on Performance Motorsports Network and also iHeartRadio. And you can call us <laughs> at 516-572-7440. Here's the phone number to get a hold of us right here at Motormouth Radio. Ray Ray, how was the week? I'm asking you again. It was kind of un- inconsequential, not much going on. Right. Still uh, lagging on vehicle maintenance on my oil change. Haven't done that. I did, get, I did get to see Pat Seppi, though. I did get to go see him and pay my bill. So <laughs> I, I was... I'm sure he was happy to see you, if, not, if, if nothing else but that. He was like, hey, what are you here for? I'm like, well, Pat, you know, i got to pay to buy you your money. Oh, do you? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me see what it is. <laughs> I'm like, wow! <laughs> With somebody like you, Ray, you, the, the shop owner can f- afford to forget because they know that you will come in and straighten up. I, it's not like some of the other people that you have to, you know, sit there and stalk them, you know, like sit up in the... the tree in their front yard there with the <laughs> binoculars and, and a rifle yeah yes. yeah we take you know, listen you know our friends take care of us so we got to make sure we take care of them right you don't you don't walk out on a bill that's right. not that's not right mm-hmm. it's part of being a good customer you actually yeah. get the pay yeah. yeah with that you know dressing up like a chocolate chip cookie and playing let's make a deal i see that so many times in shops that i go where uh yeah we're going to need to do such and such yeah we're going to need to do uh a mass airflow sensor and it's no no oh, no i'm sorry catalytic Catalytic converter. See, my just uh-huh. lost my headphones. Everybody, you tell the people the price of the correct catalytic converter because Ooh. they ain't cheap. The OEMs, yeah. Right. You know, a lot of times you can only get. We, I went through this on a uh, on a GMC Arcadia at the beginning of the week, and pretty much the only the only legit cat that you can get for it actually blew away all three of them. Uh, they're what? about twelve hundred bucks a yeah. piece. Mink. Real, now yeah. you say you prefaced it with the correct. Catalytic converter. That is are, correct. Are there incorrect mm. catalytic yeah. converters that yeah. are probably cheaper? Yes, there are. Ah. Uh, there's, there's a couple different definitions for correct. Uh, first of all... <laughs> None of them follow this show's dictum at all. Oh, correct? <laughs> Around here? No. We, 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 you know, the only, closest thing we get to correct is right. <laughs> hey, that's true. That's you true. Know, that's about it. That's but true. Um, yeah. no, mostly in most New York vehicles, um, we are our California emissions. All right, and yeah. it's a federal bozo no no to put a federal cat on a California car, which also means that a lot of times in about three months the thing the check engine light comes back on mm-hmm. again, so uh, you're pretty much stuck with using the right cat. Now sometimes the aftermarket makes them available, mm-hmm. and quite a few times they don't, which means you got to go back to the dealer. All right, in which case it's just like that line that in Goodfellas, you know. Uh, which I cannot say because there's like <laughs> friendly cousin Charlie there. Right, but right, right. It ends, it ends, in, it ends in pay there me. There was some uh, blanket, pay me. Right. Yeah, right. Yes, exactly. So, um, But we are federal here in New York, and there is a difference for California. No, no, we're California. Oh, we are California. We're, we're, for the, most, for the, the vast majority of the cars that you see are California emissions, yes. Really? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And a lot they, in New England. Even if they come from Japan. Yes. <laughs> Which is, <laughs> it's true. California, yes. Because there is a difference. And the funny thing is, this is what cracks me up. The reason why California has got different emissions is because of the San Fernando Valley, I think it is, right? Where's, where does all the pollution settle? In the, in the valley? Well, primarily, yeah, around L.A. I've been to yeah. L.A. I, I, years ago, I oh, remember, yeah. I, I couldn't smoke. You didn't I have to. I couldn't light a friggin' cigarette. You, you didn't have to. The irony is that even the Indians, before the advent of the automobile, had a name for the valley, and it was something like Big Mist or whatever the Smog Valley. Smog Valley. Right, right it yeah. It was always there. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know, but, you know, so you anyway, can't have no fun with government that way. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to the fun and say hi around with the motor mouths. Hey, good morning. Surprise, surprise. Another happy Sunday. How did I know you were going to call? Surprise. <laughs> it's you know the... me like a book after all these years. It's the Bronx. How are you, Bubba? Doing good. I'm listening to the conversation. Hey, Joe. Hey, Ray. How hey. are you guys doing today? Yep. All right. Good. Doing well. Are you, are you watching, too? Because I'm waving. Of course. <laughs> I'm waving, too, but only with one finger. <laughs> uh, and it's not your thumb. The arthritis is kicking in again, yes. huh? Yes. Joe made a good point about using the correct part. 
because I find out here, I still do some, you know, backyard service, so to speak, and I like getting the parts myself because I want to get an exact fit in OEM part. And every now and then you get these guys, they go to the auto parts store, and they buy a universal fit part. Mm -hmm. What you find out, what does it fit? Because if it's nothing, you're going to try to apply it to. <laughs> right. It's you look of yeah. oh. It universally fits nothing. Exactly. You know, like spandex and a fat woman. <laughs> Okay, you can get it on, but doesn't mean it's going to work. <laughs> right, so it's a big point over there. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you get these guys going to these different auto parts store, and you'll have, like, one part for, like, $27, and you'll have the same look-alike part for $6. Right. So they go out, and they buy the $6 part. True. And they don't understand that. Okay, hey, what a great deal I got. It's going to work. The key is Maybe. how long. Mm -hmm. No, so it's not going to work because, like uh, Joe said before, eventually it's going to kick a light, it's going to kick a code, or the car's not going to start or run, whatever the case may be. Right. So for the backyard mechanics, you know, it's called pay me now or pay me more later, but mm -hmm. you're going to pay me. Right. It's just a matter of whose convenience and at what dollar you want to spend on that particular item. Mm -hmm. No, you're right? absolutely right. You are absolutely right, Bron. That is, that's Believe it or not, you know, you get a top quality part. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of advertisements. We get a lot of advertisements out here. You know, okay, we're going to do a disc brake job. You know, parts and labor, twenty nine ninety five. Right. What does that tell you? Foreign cars extra. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> brakes uh, brake pads with liners are extra. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the catch is, and you can see this a lot. Well, it's lifetime warranty, mm -hmm. and you'll see there's some muffler shops, some brake shops, that kind of thing. And what they don't tell you is that, yeah, the part is guaranteed lifetime. But you have to pay the labor and installation fees. Sure. So they don't read the fine print, and it's a great hook to get you in. So every six months, you're going in for a new item, new set, whatever the case is, and you're getting uh, ripped off two, three, four times. Right. So if you're going for that cheap uh, bargain price, universal fit part, right, mm -hmm. and uh, you get what you pay for. So very something. true. You know? Very, very right? true. i got to praise you guys. Uh, as you know, you know, I work down at the museum. Right. Well, they did, uh, we have a newsletter that goes out, and it has a pretty good circulation there. And they gave us a half page, or I should say gave you guys, Motor Mouth Radio, with links to the website, with links to Vaughn TV. Wow. So we have uh, quite a few guys asking about it. So it's getting popular out here. Well, thank right? you so, so much. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. What, Thank did they you. lower the price of liquor or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's free. You don't have to lower it. That's, that's great. You know, here, have a drink, and then you sit down there. Just got the and label in the bucket smash, when you walk so you, in. <laughs> yep. So a revolving door. You you know, here. And real funny, it's real interesting. You go to the casino, they give you all the booze. There's no clocks and no windows. Mm -hmm. Nobody right. ever caught on to that. Yeah, very true. Right. And they pump oxygen in there to make you feel uh, revitalized. Five and keep revitalized. you revitalized. I'll make one more comment. Yeah. Joe mentioned before about the catalytic converters and the San Bernardino Valley with the smog controls. Right. We got the same thing over here, which is funny. We're in the Washer Valley, which is uh, Reno uh, Reno Valley or Washer Valley. Twenty miles south is Carson City. They have no smog, no controls whatsoever, no admissions testing whatsoever. Mm -hmm. There's only two counties in Nevada, Vegas and us, that have it. And because it goes back to the mountain ranges that uh, circumvent the valley, right. what happens is whatever admissions come, there's no venting from it. It just lays. Yeah. It's the same with the same thing in the valley. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So is that's, this that's one of those fat chick references? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for another area. So just a little background information there. Well, we also so have that cool. in New York, too, because they, they go by the air quality. The feds check the air quality in a certain, in a certain region, mm -hmm. and then if they decide that the air quality is not good enough, they... Uh, they implement emissions testing. Yeah, I right, exactly. It. And we have every day. They have, you know, the weather report comes up there, and they have a little bar at the bottom, air quality for the region. Mm -hmm. Right? And they'll tell you bad, indifferent, and they tell you, okay, scale out of wood burning stoves, that kind of thing. Okay, today is a no wood burn. Today is this. Today is that. Whatever the case is. Right, right. Right. So it does make a difference. And I'll tell you, you definitely can breathe better. I just love the smell of carbon monoxide in the morning. It just <laughs> wakes me up. <laughs> Well, Bronx, Good thank stuff. you so much for the call, my brother. We always appreciate it. And thank you okay. for the accolades. I'm going to call you this week. I just want to give you some BS okay. and get caught up. So yes. I'll catch you this week. Sounds okay? good. We'll talk later. Talk to you soon. Be Bye. safe. Bye-bye. 516 572 Right here, right now on Motormouth Radio. And the Motormouth Radio Honor Group of the Hour. Drivers that take pictures of their dashboards to show the outside temperatures. Then post it on Facebook. 
I'm getting tired of seeing minus one last week. I'm tired of seeing 55 degrees this week. Cut it out. <laughs> tired of it. Well, you got a TV. <laughs> exactly. That's why you got a window. Right. But you're part of the Motor Mouth Radio Honor Group of the Hour, so be proud. Got a lot more coming your way with Ray, Joe, myself. We're back. Hold on. Back with your car questions. Give us a call at 516-572-7440. WHPC 90.3, the radio voice of Nassau Community College, is looking for individuals, businesses, charities, or organizations in our local and global community that would like to donate to support our radio station. Whether you listen locally or online, here is how it works. Go to our webpage at ncc.edu slash whpc and click donate now. Or if you prefer, you can send a check to WHPC Radio, One Education Drive, Garden City, New York, 11530. Make check payable to the NCC Foundation. In the memo of your check, write WHPC Donate Now. Any contributions will help defray our operating costs and it's tax deductible. This message was brought to you by the radio voice of Nassau Community College. Streaming online at ncc.edu slash whpc. Got a car question? Give the Motor Mouse a call at 516-572-7440. All right, phone lines open, 516-572-7440. Joe D., Ray Guarino, I'm Chris Switzer. And uh, what are we doing here? We're just staring at the board and saying, uh, oh, the phone's not ringing. Okay. Hey, you want to you want to draw about something? Get some. Yes. Uh, I got a call this week from a good friend of ours, uh, Mike Junior. Not your Mike. Uh, right. Not that Junior. Mike. Uh, Mike Chase Collision Junior. Right. And he was. We talked about this in the past, but he wanted my opinion. The thought was to take. He has this 1970 GTO with a 400 engine and a turbo 400. I've seen it, yeah. Yeah. And the thought was, he thought the tranny was a little mushy and not shifting, you know, a little little sluggish. And should he take it out and have it rebuilt or should he go for an overdrive? Mm. So that was the question. I gave him my my answer and my my thoughts behind it, but I thought we could we could. Dig into it oh, here, or we can take the, the call. Too. Yeah, all right. Let's, do the call first, Let's jump to the phones, to the phone. How are you on with the motor mouths? Hey, guys, it's Paul. Hey, Paul, what's up, bro? <laughs> Paul just <laughs> had a driveway much. accident. Half his dune buggy <laughs> fell out. Yeah, the back of my buggy fell out. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting to the trend. I hate when that happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just changing the tranny finally. The weather's nice, so. Right. I couldn't, I couldn't afford the gas at minus one keep the place warm. <laughs> Tell me about it. Minus yeah. one degrees hit last week. We were shivering in our shoes, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my my neighbor across the street line is like, hey, take the doom buggy out. You do donuts. I'm like, well, it, you know, if it snowed and it was like 29, maybe. <laughs> I'm like, not, not at yeah. minus one or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, it had to warm up by about like, you know, 300%. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. nuts. But, uh, hey, you guys talking about uh, cheap parts? Yeah. I got a cheap part story. Go ahead. Uh, when I built this thing, you know, the, on the the brake system on this uses two pressure switches. Right. So you know, for the for the brake lights and and whatnot. <laughs> What's that? Two. We were just talking about that before the show, Paul. I'm going to use one of those to trigger my third brake light. Right. Well, let me tell you, I, the most of the ones, a lot of the ones in the in the auto parts stores are import switches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I found out the hard way that the import switches aren't that good. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah, basically, I I replaced them. I replaced the two switches here. I, you know, I ordered them online with the rest of the stuff. And, um, you know, merrily driving down the road, I step on the brake, pedal goes to the floor. Yeah. Ooh, oops. Yeah, but they use two. There's, there's um, one on, on the front system, one on the rear system, you know, for the, on the dual system. And basically what happens is, you know, when they're both working, you know, you get your brake lights and whatnot, but if one fails, you know, like if the one side of the system fails, it'll light the indicator on the dash. Mm-hmm. Well, what happened here was the top, the plastic top of the switch blew out. Oh, jeez, yikes. I know they're pulling yeah. the leaking, but jeez, that's no, no, no. ridiculous. It blew out. It blew out. Wow. Okay. So it's hanging by the wires. And, and dumped all the fluid with it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. But, uh, you know, for that one, so of course the pedal went down. I'm like, so I drove home, I'm, I was close by, so I drove home, you know, with, with the parking brake. We always get them home, don't we? <laughs> right. <laughs> way the yeah, yeah. So I changed it, you know, I, I went online just to look, and sure enough, everybody talks about what, what garbage these are, and you got to order the original German ones, which ah, were $23. Okay. So, 
Yeah, so, yeah, I ordered two. I ordered two. So I put one in, uh, you know, the one that blew out, and then when I, t- I took the boot off to check the other one, the plastic was all bulged and ready to blow. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I know we can yeah. get a nice American one. Well, if you can get the good American ones, or like I said, these are the German ones because it's a metric thread. Oh, you can't. I was just saying, you, you can't. Uh, the rear brake on a Harley Davidson, they use it, but you have a drum in the back. No, you have a drum in the back, yeah, so that you wouldn't have I it. have drum, but I know the, I know what you're talking about, yeah. but uh, I don't know if those are, met, are a metric thread. I mean, they're very close to eighth-inch pipe, but not quite exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so bottom, the bottom line there. is don't use the cheap switches. Right. <laughs> not on your brakes. Yeah, good yeah. point. Good point. Yeah, but uh, I'll tell you though, I and and I even bought, like I said, I bought a replacement, uh, you know, brake setup for this thing, and I'm sure all the stuff is import. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's drum brakes, it's you know, wheel cylinders. I did everything. You know, you're from the pedal on back. Mm-hmm. And after about, I don't know, after about 100 miles of driving, I started to get a pull. The thing mm-hmm. pulls to one side. Hmm. And no matter what I do, I can't stop this thing from pulling. Really? Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, it was weird. It was pulling to the right. You know. All, when, I mean, when you were applying the brakes, it was pulling. Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, I was driving down the street. I stop at a stop sign. The thing stops straight as an arrow. Mm-hmm. I drove to the next stop sign, two blocks down. Step on the brake. The thing the wheel almost yanked out of my hand to the right. It's telling you it wants to turn. There's another. There's like a, a fox <laughs> down there. Or a oh, yeah, maybe. Wants to yeah, check yeah, out. maybe. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So I got the thing home, and I, you know, I took it apart. I'm like, did a wheel cylinder blow out? Did something happen? I lose pressure. Checked everything. Everything looked good. Hmm. I put it back together. I readjust the brakes. Stop pulling. So hmm. now I get mad, and I stomp on the freaking pedal. Right? <laughs> stomp on the pedal. So guess what? It stopped pulling to the right. Yeah. <laughs> now, now it pulls to the left. <laughs> I swear to God. I mean, the I only other that. thing I can think of is cheap wheel cylinders with lousy clearance and the pistons cocking in the bores. It's, yeah, it's possible. Either that or, I mean, the, or the crud that you had on one on one port probably fell over to the other port when you stomped on it. That's about the only thing. Well, that's all new. Yeah, it's, it's all, all new. new. And, and you know what? I mean, it, in all the years driving, now you know as well as I do, right? When you kids had these cars, there were drum brakes and this and that. And, you know, we used to just get in there, sandpaper, clean the drums, slap on a set of shoes, do whatever. Right. Sure. I never had brakes pull. Not unless you blew out a wheel cylinder or right, something. Right, right. Never had them pull. Right. Mm-hmm. Well. These stupid things, yeah, these stupid things are pulling, and everything is new and beautiful and clean. I got a, I got a tight pedal, you know, a nice solid pedal. Okay. I got two questions for you. First sure. of all, is this a front to rear split, or is this a diagonal split? It's a front rear split. Front rear split. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, second question. You know what new spells, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we say it together? Yeah, sure. Never. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Um, and it, it pulls... Okay, you have a uh, a laser thermometer? You have one of them temperature guns? Sure. Okay, why don't you make a few stops, jump out, and ha- and shoot the four drums, or the four, the four wheels to see if one of them is warmer than the other. Yeah. Right, right. I, I At mean, least I'll I tell did, you who you bid I did that. I did that by hand. Right. Mm. And nothing yeah. was, nothing jumped out at me as being extremely hot. Right, right. I mean, you know what I mean? I drove around quite a bit, came home, and everything was, everything was reasonably warm. Nothing jumped out so at me. You need to write with the numbers on your finger? <laughs> yeah, right. No, I honestly I didn't do it with the, the thermometer. Right. But right. just like looking for like a dragging wheel or anything like that, I even jacked up each side, you know, paint. and gave it a spin. What's that? With off a blistering paint. You can always yeah. feel like a. A Vienna sausage wrapped in, in foil yeah, on one yeah, wheel, yeah, and you yeah, can put, yeah. like, some uh, sour on the other. And see which one right. gets hotter. Right. Well, at least you keep it with the German theme. That's, I'm know. trying. I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, because, you know what? What if it ain't brakes? Meaning? Suspension. Meaning, yeah, maybe, like, if a, a, a control yeah. arm bushing is shifting slightly, or a brake hose that's acting as a check valve, and one, one wheel cylinder is coming out a little Yeah, like an it. internal collapse yeah, right. hose. Camaro, uh, a lot you of know, GM yeah, vehicles. Yeah, it's possible. I yeah. mean, it's possible, but I mean, I've gone over the system. I've got, well, suspension's all new. You know, ball joints, everything is tight. I even double check the alignment. Right. You know, everything's tight. I was looking for that too. Maybe a wheel pulling back, you know, something causing it to drag. Mm-hmm. So you yeah, got under there with the pry bar and did the gold, the gold's gym grunt on every point with the, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. with the bush. Yeah. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. No. Well, plus, you gotta realize, I put, I put everything new. Everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, all new ball joints, bushings, Tie rod ends. Everything is new. 
If, you know, I well, mean, and it's all tight. Let me add something. Tight. Christian just sent me a couple of points here. First one was to watch out for eighth inch pipe thread because some are eighth twenty six and some are eighth twenty seven. Right, MPT NT. Wow. Okay. Talk about close. That's uh, yeah. on the Harleys. And the other thing was he said, go to Jersey on their inspection machine. You have to drive on the machine and hit the brakes, and it tells you which side is braking more. It gives you brake bias, apparently. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I saw, actually saw that on Wheel of Dealers. That's pretty they, cool. They, they use that in Europe for the MOT inspection. Right. Mm. Or you put it on a lift. You stick somebody, you stick somebody in the car, mm-hmm. and you got you to gotta work to... I'm, I'm, not, I'm being serious here, too. And you just gradually step on the pedal, and mm-hmm. you spin each tire individually while it's up in the air and as somebody yells out a quarter pedal half pedal you know whatever Mm -hmm. and you see where the wheel stops turning i mean it's kind of unscientific i mean short of a brake pressure gauge or something like that Mm. which of course is the next level but a lot of times um, uh speaking of that thank you joe paul i happen to have a set of uh, brake pressure gauge there you go. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes, I, I do. Who I was talking to <laughs> about with. You know, to my break whatever drawer. proposition you want. Yeah, so if you want yeah, to borrow that, it. you just yeah. you thread it into the, um, you take the uh, bleeder valve out, you thread it into that port, and you mm-hmm. just stop on the pedal, and it just reads pressure. It has a telltale right. on it, so it'll tell you what the high pressure is. Right, right. So, yeah, I have that, too, if you'd like. Yeah. Okay. So it because, is, it is yeah, but the, the weird thing was, like I said, it was pulling to the right, yeah. then it started pulling to the left. That's pretty funny. <laughs> that is weird. Very yeah, cool. Pretty funny. Well, but, you know, uh, on another yeah, note, my Fiat kind of does that. Every once in a while, when it heats up, it'll pull to the right. And I know that car's yeah. got these funky calipers, and sometimes it doesn't. And then it doesn't usually pull to the other side, but sometimes I'll feel another little thing. It's kind of the same thing. I'm kind of living with it because, again, I replaced everything, and I don't want to replace it all again. So Right, right. It's a thrill yeah, ride, the way I'm concerned. Right, right. You know, I mean, you got, like I said, when, when you're driving around, I mean, it, it seems like as you're driving a while, it seems to be, you know, get it's either, it's either not quite as bad or you just get used to it hmm. while you're driving. Right. That's true. Yeah. That's like the show. Right. How about cold right. versus hot? Does, does it happen when you first come out? When, if you first come out, you, maybe the first block or two, you're all right, and then you drive. Well, it'll, no, it'll go. happen. It'll happen when you first come out. Okay. But again, as far as it happening worse, maybe it's one of those things where if you haven't been in the vehicle for a while, you jump in it, you take a drive, you step on the brake, it catches you by surprise. Yeah. Right. right. So is it worse or is it just catching you by surprise? I'm going to have to right. really, you know, because I took it out yesterday. And of course, first thing, first roll down the street, I step on the brake, oh, pull to the left, you know, and it got me. But um, you got to put an angular, an angular transducer on the steering wheel so you can see how fast and how far it moves. And then you'll know. Yeah, right. <laughs> Come on, yeah, you can you, do that. Actually, you know what? I got one of those G-Tech meters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll put that there. Sure, you can do that. <laughs> That'll give me, you know, <laughs> la- lateral Gs to see how hard it pulls when yeah. I'm on the brakes. I got a you couple know? friends. I just would see which window he hit when he, you know, which window his head would bash into when you... Yeah, with Paul Cation, <laughs> throw him out because there are no yeah, windows. Right, there are no windows. Window. Yeah, okay. yeah. No, yeah, it doesn't work for you. No. All righty, Paul. Well, you're gonna you gonna go back and try and get your uh, your engine back in your buggy, or uh, well, I'm still I'm still pulling the old tra- I'm still pulling the old transmission out. <laughs> okay. I'm not, not quite there yet. All right. All righty, my brother. Then we will let you go. All right. Play some music. Talk to you soon, bro. All right. Talk okay. to you later. Let's how you make out. Yes. Bye. We'll talk bye. to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Five one six five seven two seven four four zero is the phone number. To get a hold of us right here at Motormouth Radio, Joe D., Ray Guarino, I'm Chris Switzer. Of course, you can hear the show on Performance Motorsports Network. You can also check us out on iHeartRadio. A lot of fun with them on our side. Got a lot more of this mess coming your way right here on your non nonstop shopping, automotive shopping, oh, muck and fudge, whatever it is. It's Motor Mouth Radio. Keep it where you got it. Have a question about your car? Give the Motor Mouths a call. 516-572-7440. WHBC Garden City, New York. The voice of Nassau Community College. <laughs> Join WHPC's Daily News Wrap-Up, weekdays at 4.30 p.m., bringing you a complete report of the day's news home and abroad, as well as sports, weather, and many other informative features. We're Long Island's FM Alternative. The corner... Let the motor mouth help you out at 516-572-7440. Our phone standing message. 516-572-7440 is the phone number. Glad you're back. Glad you can join us. 
Ray Guarino, Joe D, I'm Chris Switzer. We're going to go to the back of the phones, back to what Ray calls the fun. We're going to say hi to the motor mouths. Hi. Hi, who's this? This is Big Al from Wanto. Hey, Big Al, Big what's Al. up? How you guys doing? Doing well. What's going on? Love your show. It's really, really great. The only thing is, it's not on long enough, and it's not on uh, on a daily basis. How long have you been listening, Al? Uh, you know what? I've been listening maybe about 15 years. Okay. Wow. wow. And uh, I never called you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, it's pretty spectacular, Al, because we've only been on for 14, but that's <laughs> <Yeah>. good. <laughs> well, there were a couple of years we crammed in more than one year. <laughs> I know. Really, we got to start making motor mouth calendars. <laughs> you guys been on for 14 years? That's, yeah, yes, correct. Yeah, yeah well, I, I, I estimated Close enough. 15 years. We're not going to hold you to it. That's cool. Please don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, can I ask you a question? Sure. sure. All right. So I'm going round and around with this. I bought my son a 2001 uh, Dodge Dakota SLT 3.9 liter automatic transmission, two wheel drive. Okay. 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 It's a great little truck, you know, for him to knock around, throw his hockey equipment in and stuff. Anyway, the only thing wrong with this truck, believe it or not, it was a Florida truck. The only thing wrong with this truck, it had a check engine light. Okay. Right. No codes. Right? Really? Truck ran fine. Shifted fine, started, stopped, everything, right? Mm -hmm. So now it's time to get the truck an inspection sticker, right? I want to, you know, give my son the truck legit. So I said, take care of the check engine light to my mechanic, right? Right. He says, there's nothing going on with codes or anything like that. No EGR, no nothing like that. He says, the, the, the computer's not talking to uh, the modules or the, it, within themselves, something yeah, like that. But it had no, it had no drivability problem. Okay. Okay. So he puts an aftermarket PCM in it. Right? Okay. In the name thing, of the runs for, thing runs for one day, right? In the name of the song. My son tells me this. This is the best uh, description I can get from me. He said, "Dad, I was parked. The truck was idling. I was waiting for my friend. The dash light started to come on, like the bulb check, and I shut it off. Boom! It never restarts. Okay. <laughs> right." I get the truck home, I check it, it's got no spark. It cranks, no fire, okay? okay? Okay. By the way, I bring it back to the guy, right? Puts in another computer. Now it fires, it runs for two to three seconds, and it quits. Still no codes, okay? So he's telling me it's the security key immobilizer module. Skim. Okay? Scream. The the Which skim. is part of the scream system, yes, okay. Right. Secret Absolutely. key, blah, 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 okay. Right. So naturally, I've been reading about this for like weeks, okay, because this problem still isn't resolved. Come to, come to find I get another aftermarket computer that I bought over the Internet, okay, had it flashed, right? It mm. actually came flashed, okay? okay. And I changed the, the immobilizer module, the one that goes around the steering column, Right. Right. Name and just holding this. Yeah, okay. It's a little module that goes on the right side of the steering yeah, column. Right. It's got the transceiver in it, and it's got like four wires. Yeah, okay. It's got a halo. It's got a halo antenna that goes around the lock cylinder. Oh yeah. Okay. So I put this in. Now I get a guy to come. Right. He used three machines, two different occasions. Okay. Uh -huh. Cannot get this thing programmed. I got the pin from Chrysler. Okay. Right. There's a four-digit pin. Yeah, you gotta have that, otherwise you ain't doing nothing, yeah. Right, so, and evidently, there's a special DRB2 DR, it would be a DR, It would be a DRB3 for that. DRB3, whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, this guy, I don't know what, he, he had a box. I'm, I'm telling you, he had a box of scanners. Okay. <laughs> and that he sounds familiar. Sounds like Joe's trunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, this is where I'm at with this thing. Now, here's, here's my problem. Again, from the start, this truck ran perfect, okay? Right. I even threw a tune-up on it just for the hell of it. Like, you know, I, I acquired it used, okay? This truck ran perfect. Mm -hmm. Now it's got all of these problems, and it's like, once you change something and it complicates, you're chasing something, it's a ghost, you know? Yeah, it's more like a goblin or one of them more. The ghosts are, you know, like Casper, they're nice. It's the goblins and the... The gremlins. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. Um, okay. I, I, that's a, that's pretty much the whole story, right? 
pretty much the whole story. The point I'm at is like, uh, you know, this is a programming issue, and is it really that difficult for Chrysler's? No, actually not. Um, Chrysler is probably one of the biggest pains in the butt to do the skim because you need the correct tool, which until about maybe four or five years ago, you pretty much were stuck with the Chrysler DRB. Uh, there are a number of aftermarket tools that can do them. Uh, off the top of my head, I know Autel does it. Uh, a lot of sh- a lot of shops or locksmiths with like what they call LSIDs, uh, they have aftermarket tools that can also once you have the uh, once you have the skim, once you have the pin number from Chrysler, you need that. Otherwise, you can never get those two guys to talk to each other. Not to interrupt you, yeah. that's exactly who came to the house, a locksmith guy. Yeah, but you know what? Those I, I happen to have a, a good friend of mine who is a locksmith, and that machine works pretty good. As a matter of fact, he's got a DRB three. And a lot of times that aftermarket tool is just easier. And it works just fine. It's legit. As a matter of fact, uh, depending on the type of computer you got, what you do is that if the, if the shop is conscientious about programming in the VIN before you, uh, before you start the truck up, actually you get three starts. It's like that, that happy days thing where the battery had 19 good starts. You get three starts with a Chrysler. And if it's not programmed, then it tells you to go <laughs> yourself. But, if you if you program the VIN in, which a lot of the uh, the regular shop level aftermarket tools are capable of doing, uh, usually the everybody's happy with each other. But yeah, well, pro- that's not happening. He, he, right he, he now, programmed the VIN, and you know he, I mean, he went through the gamut of this. So, I mean, he worked on it for hours. I think there's something wrong with the ECM, and you also changed the module. Now, where'd you get the module from? It's a Mopar PC. It's a Mopar immobilizer. Right, so Brandy Spanking, no. Brandy, well, Brandy Spanking, I got it on the internet in a Brandy Spanking new box. I mean, I guess it's Brandy Spanking new. All right, yeah, no, because there's a lot of places that sell, you know, like Chrysler dealers or whatever. That, that, that It's legit Chrysler parts, the same thing as if you wouldn't buy them over the parts counter. Yeah, no, this, that, is, this is a Mopar part in a Mopar box. Yeah, fine, all right. Uh, although, I think your original pro- your problem was is that you've gotten a couple of bad replacement ECMs. Yeah, I know from a friend of mine who does, uh, actually two friends of mine that do a lot of programming, that uh, in general, a lot of car companies these days, even the ones you buy from the dealer, Brandy Spanking, who actually, they're reman, they're, they're finger crosses, all right? The aftermarket ones ain't so hot neither. But Joe, is it, can Al go back to like a starting point where he can put the old ECM back in? Put If the shop still it. got it, yeah. Can't can't do do it. It. Yeah, yeah, all right. All right, you know what I would do? I would go to the boneyard. I would go to the boneyard and pick up an ECM out. You know, it, it's not a rare vehicle. Go to the boneyard, pick up pick up one with the with the same numbers on it. You know, the Chrysler number, which is like seven digits with two letters. Even if it's even if it's behind one, like if it's, if it's an AF, you might want to get like an AG or a. <laughs> yeah, it's. You, but, I'm not laughing. Well, Christian just said his fix would be points and a carburetor. <laughs> Yeah, that's no fun. That's throwing up the white flag. <laughs> I know. But, uh, yeah, I, I've seen a lot of... Rep- I had a, a friend of mine go through, like, three GM replacement ECMs right out of the deal. Wow. And, and basically, he went to the boneyard, picked up another one, slammed it in there. He has the capability of flashing it. <laughs> done. Out the door. So that, you- that was one suggestion made to me. But, I mean, guys, it's kind of ridiculous... Four PCMs in a in a vehicle that was running. Yeah. And now it's not running. Well, just to back you up a little bit, the original problem with the check engine light on. All right, if the check engine light was on because it shouldn't be, there's codes for that. It's a PO650. In other words, the ECM actually monitors the check engine light circuit, and if it's on when it should be off, or vice versa. Matter of fact, I was just having a chat with one of my friends on that on a Chevy Suburban. It ends up being a wiring problem. The ECM knows if somebody made, is, has been making whoopee with that light because for the inspection. Most of the time it's to shut it off, but you have the opposite. Also, somebody who's troubleshooting it, you should be able to see the mill light status on the scan data. So if that thing is on and ain't no codes, okay, yeah, maybe you got an ECM problem. All right, yeah. but <sighs> you got a couple things that don't smell too good there. You know, I would say at this point, what you got to do is go back to... You still got the original immobilizer, right? Yes. All right. Uh, hold on, you got the new one in there. Probably he, the... He supposedly programmed the new one. I mean, I saw him. All he right. had the thing there, he did the pin, and he even did it where he made it zero, zero, zero. 
you know. Okay, for, yeah, uh, you can. Code. Right, yeah. right, right. But the thing is, is that basically, the as long as the two modules are communicating with each other, in other words, the the PCM and the skim, uh, basically, uh, the only thing they really have to exchange is the is the VIN numbers. As long yeah. as the VIN numbers match, everybody's happy. You know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know. It. it I, I don't know what to do here. I don't know if it's, you know, how, do you, how do you tell if it's the PCM, you know, the second and third one that are not working? Uh, you know, how, how do you know if it's, you know, if they, I, I don't know, there's something indicating with the, uh, with the security light on the dash, it's supposed to pop once and then go off and, you know, there's... Well, there's, there's, there's codes for all this stuff. There, if you got the right scan tool, you, there, there's codes for all this stuff. And you don't necessarily need a Chrysler DRB3, even though that is the stuff. But like a, a Snap-on, uh, for example, with a, or an hotel with up-to-date software should do just fine. It's an older vehicle. I mean, you know, it, yeah, that's that, that, sy- that system is actually, there, there are two or three powertrain systems past that. So they got that yeah. one down. It's like watching a movie you watched before. All right. What I would do for starters, uh, all right, to answer your question about the ECMs, Christ, I, I work for an auto parts company. Chrysler ECMs have always sucked to rebuild. They're just something about their circuit boards that are a raving pain in the butt. Okay, Christ, rebuilt and Chrysler ECM. That's called. That's probably what they call an SBEC PCM, or is it an NGC? Actually, it doesn't really matter. They both I'm, suck to I'm rebuild. Not sure. <laughs> All right, uh, but basically those. It's a POS. That's yeah, that's right. cool. Yeah, there you go. That's three letters that they come. Yeah, yeah. go to the boneyard. Go to the boneyard. Get one. Have somebody with the correct tool punch in the vent. Don't even do nothing else. Drop it in there, two Hail Marys, three Our Fathers, I bet you the thing starts. Wow. I, all right, man. Uh, you know, that, that was a suggestion made to me, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, out of a running vehicle, something that got hit in the butt, you know what I mean? Right, mm-hmm. right, I would right. need, if you have somebody who can flash for you, that's fine, but personally, if you get the one with the right numbers, I would just drop it in, cross my fingers, and see what happens. Big all right, right, before you get nuts. Let us know. We're very yeah. intrigued here. I love this all stuff. Right. I eat this stuff up. Yeah, right on, let me tell you, Joe, I never saw the wrinkles in his face just like contort the way he was going on. I, <laughs> I never saw him like I this. I lit the virtual cigarette and everything. You did. <laughs> there's, there's, there's parts of my body that are crinkling and wrinkling, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. hopefully we were able to shed a little bit of light on it, Al. All right, guys. Thanks for letting me pick your brain. <laughs> Not a problem. Not a problem. Good luck. Christian says check. pulling these guys. We'll talk soon. Thanks for hey, taking my call, boys. No problem. All right. Five one six five seven two seven four four zero. Wow, watching Joe he's filming himself. He's done. <laughs> Catch him while he's well, still you, you, made, you made Pat up. You feel like he was back at work, and he, I told him just shut it off. You can walk away, and he said he can't because it's like watching a train wreck. You have to, you have to <laughs> see, see it till the conclusion. Joe D, Ray Guarino, I'm Chris Switzer. This is Motormouth Radio, and the Motormouth Radio Honor Group of the Hour drivers that take pictures of their dashboard to show the outside temperature and then post it on Facebook. You know who you are. Quietly pat yourself on the back because you're part of the Motormouth Radio Honor Group of the Hour. So keep it where you got it. On the bottom, some holy water in the match. A lot more coming your way. Hold on. We'll be back. Five seven two seven four four zero. Oh, I should have said more amount. Thanks. Quite frankly, there are better things to do with your time. <laughs> Motor on ninety point three FM WHPC. You got the touch. Tune in every Saturday morning at nine AM and hear a program unlike any other. Join me, host Justin Greenberg, as I play music that I promise you're not gonna hear anywhere else, and some hits that you'll be singing along to with as well. It's Saturday Rock, Saturdays at 9 a.m. on 90.3 FM, WHPC, the radio voice of Nassau Community College in Garden City, New York. Oh, yeah! Running right? Let the Motor Mouse help you out at 516-572-7440. All right, welcome back to Motor Mouse Radio. Taking those calls, 516-572-7440 is the phone number. Joe, shouldn't... Shouldn't the customer get the the the, uh, the PCM back, or does no, it have it's to? A it's, it's a core. core they're going to they, go ruin now. that one now. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it have been advantageous if that if, well, if well, I would have gotten it back? You know, the funny thing about stuff like that is that you know the, the parts house wants the core back, right? You know, and most shops, you know, maybe once a week or whatever, that stuff goes back. You know, depending on the, the relationship with their parts house, mm-hmm. usually that stuff goes back like maybe once a week. The guy comes and collects all the cores, defects, whatever. But um, I was in the habit 
you know, because I've run into this before, that we used to hang on to the ECM well, for a but week. But you used to dress like a nun, like, regularly, so. <laughs> right, right, right. I, 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 Quite I, a habit. That's Ish. what you was in the habit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but <I'm fun. laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, no. That hey, you know them. I went to grammar school with nuns. You know them. Them beads. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, ninja well, nuns. It's like Bruce Lee, man. Forget the it. The first order of the of the, uh, the kung fu uh, ninja nuns. I know. Yeah, that's it. You know. I think I saw were, that movie. They were hell with the with a the yardstick, boy. <laughs> they're, they're like they're like the Navy SEALs of the Catholic education. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to screw with them, ladies. Nope. But Definitely that's not. I remember having a trouble with the the eighty four Corvette that I had that it was it happened to be this, a stick car, so of course I get a. I remember having a conversation mm-hmm. with you about ECMs and yes. then proms. Yes. Yeah, and uh, I think it was a a, a P O five two code. I think it was O five two. I remember. I don't know if it was P O five two. But anyway, the it was the ECM. Oh, prom era. Yeah, it actually is. Oh, just E O fifty two. E O fifty two. Yeah. Okay. And then OBD one call like that. Yeah. And I remember not being able to go get that. Uh, that ECM, it was like nowhere to be found, and one guy had it. Right. One. Yeah, that that's because, it. you know, uh, first of all, it wasn't exactly a car you found on every street corner, as in stick Corvette. Right. Second of all, Corvette owners tend to hoard parts. Yeah, they sure <laughs> do. You know, I mean, they, they've, they've got this Camaro and Chevelle on this beat when it comes to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Know, so, and, uh, and what I did was, I figured, and this is my thought, I could have taken the original out of the car and shipped it out to have it rebuilt and then have it brought back and put it in the car and not know... If it was going to work well or not. Instead, I would much rather go and try and, like you say, find one out of a running vehicle or just a stock one. And now you have somewhat of a benchmark. Yeah, based right, on that yeah. in. And then once that's in, now you take the one that you had taken out that was bad, send that out, have it rebuilt. Right. So, so you don't lose that. Exactly. What would you say that 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 starting line, that starting point? Yeah, the baseline, the benchmark. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm a big fan of baselining and benchmarking. That. Once Al gave away his original PCM out of the yeah. truck, well, uh, the the starting line went with it. Yeah, well, that's kind of out of his control because you know he had a shop though, which right. you know there, there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? As a matter of fact, if you're not familiar with that type of system, you're better off because I've seen people cause all kinds of stuff. You know, dipping their hands into stuff that they really shouldn't. Well, you know what? I don't really need a coolant set. Let me just wire the fan. Let me just hot wire the fan straight to the battery. Oh, Al's pretty familiar with it now. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, he's pretty well read. Most most people don't understand about skim and the pin and all that stuff. There mm-hmm. usually, you know, as Chris used to call it, the pops and clicks. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. You know, it. so right, yeah, right. he's definitely done his homework. Very, very true. Five one six five seven two seven four four zero. Joe actually stood up. He stood up to answer the I problem. got off my fat little... He know. did. You could have watched it on vaughnlive.tv <laughs> slash Motormouth Radio. I see his head rise. <laughs> <laughs> did. Unfortunately, the rest of my body didn't go anyplace. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of making these command decisions, what do you guys think about Mike's call? Let's get back. Uh, I want to get revisit that again because I oh, told him I'd take a consensus. I, I, I have a, him. an easy fix on that. No, not an overdrive. I say rebuild the uh, transmission. A nice shift kit would be very good. A mild shift kit. That's what I figured you would say. That's a 400, I think. Turbo yeah. 400. Yeah. And why did is that a bad thing that you figured? That no, not necessarily. Up? But well, that's what I would do. Well, rebuild the transmission and no overdrive. Since that tranny is just about indestructible, mm-hmm. it assuming is. that it's in good shape, and he's a kid, mm-hmm. nothing against youth there, but like, let's face it, that might be good from the reliability standpoint. Mm-hmm. Because it's not a numbers matching type of concours, you know. Right. Uh, you know, every, every, every screw is in the right place or whatever. Even though I've seen the car, it's pretty, it's pretty on, you know what I yeah. mean? But yeah. I, I would probably, you know, if I was going to drive it any place that involved anything more than, like, say, 30 miles an hour, I'd probably slap an overdrive in it. Yep. I mean, that's what I'm going through with the Chevelle. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. the owner, every once in a while, the, the power glide, it just makes it a dog. I was explaining to him how we drove with power glides. And right. he, I could hear him shriveling and having, like, massive fits of anxiety over the phone, like, you did what? Shift yes. once? Yeah, and, and really. Then, and then I had a, I had a thought, <clears throat> dealing with my own kids, I had a thought that kind of cleared it up for me, and I said to him, hey, wait a minute, Mike, because I said to him right off the bat, OD. I said, save your money, go for the OD. I said, I'll even send you to a shop who can do it. Pat. But anyway, yes, Chris? But didn't you say that it wasn't shifting well? Yeah, yeah, he's having a little bit of an issue. It's a little so, soft shift. And so how did an overdrive to handle that problem? In other words, you have to go through the training anyway. Because so you're going to have a whole new that transmission money. that's going to be built the way he wants. But I, what I realized was, Mike has, is of the age, 
He's never driven anything regularly that wasn't computer controlled, fuel injected, or had an overdrive transmission. Right. Or had disc brakes. Everything yep. he drove, that's his baseline. So now to go take him back to a car that has a, a, a Turbo 400 in it, and he was saying, boy, you know, on the highway, the thing is really revving. I'm like, yeah, I can tell you, man. I was like 3,800 RPM at 60 miles an hour in my car. With a four he's got speed. some gears in it, too, right? Uh, they're, they're mild. Whatever they are, they're mild. It's, it's not crazy. But, you know, compared to what an o, how an OD runs. Which they pretty much idle. Yeah. yeah. You know. So I said, that being the case, you don't have any other point of reference. You're never going to be happy until you have an overdrive transmission. I said, yeah. I believe that. So you can, you know, fix the one up you have now. You can throw a shift improver kit in it yourself. You have access to a lift. You can do that. So I'll help you do it. And then save your money, and then do the OD conversion. Right, I thought, but because uh, there's no, we're not worried about originality. Pat just sent me dollar signs. Well, Pat, you were the guy <laughs> we're going to call again an estimate, so you can maybe show up in your pencil yeah, well, on that he, one, especially if there's no core involved. <laughs> right. Well, he's got a yeah. If you know, exactly. if you, you can find like a, actually, I don't know if I would use a 704R on that or a 204R. I'd probably go with seven. And that's a good thing, Pat. You know, if you want, give us a call, Pat, and jump in on this. We got a few minutes because from a guy who does this conversion, yeah. and he does it fairly regularly for guys. You know, he's got the other side of it. He knows what the monetary... And I told Mike, it's not just taking a training and throwing it in. It's a cross-member. cross-member tra- drive shaft. Yeah, because that's right, right. That's a 400 drive shaft, which has got the big yoke on it. Right. Yeah, which that's all going to have to be modified. They make all that stuff now? Oh, yeah. Now they do, Well, it's, the, it's not an odd, oddball car. You it's know, an easy swap. Yeah. You know, the OD uh, actually had electronic speedometer. You had the right. ST. Now they make converges, converters for that, too. So everything right. is there. Everything's available. But it all just adds to the final... To the final bill. Can he add an overdrive unit to the existing transmission? Oh, like a gear vendors. Yeah, you could put yeah. a gear vendors in the back, but yeah, guys are usually doing that on street rods or yeah. you know, anything that's more modern. You put just put a train in. Yeah, that, that's kind of overkill, especially because like a popular car like an A body. Mm-hmm. All right, you could the, a, a lot of trainees will just get up and walk in there. Like I know with the two hundred swap, if I go to do one on the Chevelle, yeah, it's pretty straight up. A little bit of cross member movement, a little bit of mount changing, right. Other than that, it's pretty much point and click. Yeah, you know, and it drops right in. Right, right. You know, some the, the less modifications you got to do to the car, the better. Right. You know, the only thing, the only shame of it is the four hundred. It's a bulletproof, tough tranny. Well, you, know, you, you stick it under the bench. Gear. Yeah, exactly. You stick it under the bench, and it's right, you know, right there for later. Five one six five seven two seven four four zero on this fine day. Yes. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. That I'm a big fan good. of modifying stuff now for the you know the, if. If the car is not an original piece that, you know, you want to keep it all numbers matching, I, I think, you know, Ray, you're the living proof of that. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I Where I, you, the no modern qualms. components between availability and they're just flat out better a lot of times. Right. You know, that I, I would go with that. And, and like in the case of your car, the Chevelle is an original car and you still chose to make some of those modifications because they just drivability. It's like I said to Chris years ago, why, when the question came up, why didn't I restore my car stock? Mm-hmm. I said, because I wouldn't want to drive it. Right. <laughs> I drum, wouldn't want to drive it. Drum brakes. <laughs> yeah, 7.75 7. Yeah. by 14 tires. Ah. No. Yeah, no, it's no, pretty, I, it's I, pretty I horrible. Take it yeah. Out. So, yeah, it's, you know, if you're going to use it, that's what I told Mike. So if you're going to drive the car, make it the way, you'll never be happy unless unless you get it the way you want it. And if you got a corner in the garage, you just keep all that stuff. As long as you're not making major surgery to the vehicle, you can keep all that stuff piled up. Right. And you can always put it back if one day you sober up and decide to make yeah, the car original whatever. again. Yeah, no, very, very true. Now, I'm with you guys on that, when, especially when you have a car like yours, Ray, the GTO, where it really wasn't feasible to bring it back, and sto- bring it back to stock even in 1975 because it was so far out of well, stock in, when you got a hold of it, No, right? no, 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 that's not, that's not correct. In 75, I've, I could have. All I needed was a rear end. Oh, that was it? The only thing different was it had a Chevy 12 bolt in it. So I could have. So you could have easily just swapped that out. Sure. Oh, you had the original motor in the yep. car, too. I had the Super Turbine 300 in there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Took that mm-hmm. out. I actually did put a Turbo 400 in first. Yeah. Right. And then took that out. Well, with that, when you got the car again, when you started to do it one more time, which was this Oh, time, now, this time, yeah. It was too far gone to bring well, it By that time, I had changed the engine and, right. yeah, and the transmission all the stuff was changed. You yeah. yeah. Well, back it, in 75, too, it was, a, it was a 10-year-old car. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, was, right. it wasn't, and there was still plenty of them out there now. Right. Maybe, you know, if you well, found it in the bottom of a barn somewhere. I got a 10 bolt posi po- rear for my car sitting on the side of my garage. I scored one of those about 25 years ago. You know, right, so I right. could have put that in. I had a 389, but I, I let that go. But I did go out and see our friend Peter Bird last week. I got to ah. see, speaking of interiors, I got to see Peter. And uh, we were talking about the options for my seats and all. So he's still doing well. He's, uh, his business is thriving, trying to get guys to work. Same problem Pat has, trying to find guys, but now trying to find guys who are 
are ardent about interior work. You know, they're just, he says they're just not out there. You know, you try to get guys. He goes through kids left and right. They say they're going to do the right thing. They say that they're into it. They're, and then he's like, no, nope, I've got to let you go. No, nope, I've got to let you go. No. Nope. What part of on time, coming on time and leaving? <laughs> Didn't you understand? Like, you know, we, we discussed it. No, you have no problem coming to work these hours every day. And now, now you come to work and say, well, I got a, I, I got a physical therapy appointment three, day, three days a week. I got to leave for. I, well, what happened to that during the interview? You know? Yeah, seriously. So, yeah, that, that, that's the biggest problem with shop owners these days is, is finding good, repeatable, dependable help. If the battle is showing up. Yeah. That's for sure. 516-572-7440. That's a phone number to get a hold of us. Joe is still scratching his head. It's still still simmering from uh, from the phone calls going on this hour. If you missed any of it, go to MotormouthRadio.com. Later on in the day, we should have it up uh, for you. Uh, later on, we'll have this program. If you missed any of it, that's, wh- that's where you can find it. Yeah, that's what we do. We, we replay it. We make fun of each other. and say, hey, you actually said that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That was good to see you working it, Joe. I, I appreciate that. I, I like to watch the, the wheels turn. That is my day, mm. you know, depending on which locale I'm in. But that's like walking around trying to, like, hash out stuff. That's just what I do. It's, mm-hmm. You usually see me here all nice and mellow and stuff. And, and that's not. Does that happen, like, literally eight hours a day where you're just hit with a one problem after another where you're standing up smoking smoking virtual cigarettes. Yeah, uh, it's, that's life. I mean, it's, it's like the, respiration there. What, like, was, you know. what was the email you sent the other day from the from the tech line about the guy installed the part and it didn't didn't set on fire? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy, <laughs> inst- the guy installed a set of injectors and the, 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 help, the, the, the help line guy that said, it said, uh, it wasn't uh, 2003 Neon, installed a set of injectors, no fire. So mm-hmm. I wrote him back, you know, I'm supposed to answer what happened. And I, I sent him back, congratulated him. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, you know, I thought that was perfectly, perfectly apropos response, right? Oh, you know? geez. Didn't have to use the fire extinguisher after all. Right, repair. right, right. Yeah. Well, remember, in re- depending on what part of the country you're talking about, fire mm. is spark. Right. right. And, you know, you got fuel or juice or, you know, you, get, you have to remember you have to learn the, the You need the 50-state dictionary. Yeah, exactly. You know, foot feed is gas pedal. Is it soda or pop? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Crank foot means feed? actually, foot feed is gas pedal. What, in, in England? No, that's, that's actually Midwest. Was that a tractor thing? <laughs> I, I guess so. Wow. It's, you know either, it's either that or the John carnivorous Deere's thing in, the, in your floorboard there, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. The one that bothered me was go pedal. Go, go pedal for an well, accelerator. That was the one that always bothered me. Like, All right. It sounded so... The go pedal in the world pedal. Yeah, I kind of like that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, you know... Okay. I kind of like go pedal, yeah. It, it, it was basic. It always, like, always and then there's the happy pedal. I drive a Zed type. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, that's mine, yeah. When you see the third one, that's the happy pedal. The right. happy pedal? The, like the wow pedal? No, the happy pedal. What's the happy pedal? The third the one. Watch. Because it makes me happy. <laughs> right. See? Yeah, I, there's a Chevelle. We've been in cruising. Hey, Joe, there's a Chevelle. It's got a happy pedal. Like, oh, yeah. It's got, and, it's, and it's got the uh, you know it's got the happy stick too. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, that I know what that is. Right, which is not to be confused with the joystick. Which I'm is talking about the Hearst one though. Yeah. Right, <laughs> not the Hearst, the Hearst, the Hearst pedal. Yeah, yeah, that's well, it. Gentlemen, that looks like it. We're pretty much done right here. At Motormouth Radio, Joe D, oh. Ray Guarino. What do we got coming up next week? Eh? Marty Shore. Hey, very good. Cool. Cool. Be good to hear from Uncle Marty once again talking about his new book. I'd like to hear that. Very cool. So for Joe and for Ray, I'm Chris Switzer. This is Motormouth Radio. And always remember the advice we enjoy giving. Don't follow us home. See ya. Bye. See ya. Bye.